They're trying to target the top organizers. Everyone knows who the top organizer is. It's Trump. He organized it. He facilitated it. He has a bunch of people under him. He put in specific positions to orchestrate, orchestrate it. And no one's gone after Trump. I mean, there's some lawsuits, civil lawsuits being levied against him. And Trump doesn't even have to show up. He can just send his lawyer, one of his teams of lawyers, to go in and say, hey, we need this extension filed. Uh, we have to... We need this extension filed. We have to gather documents. Um, and we got to come back next year. This tactic seems to work. Uh, and it only works for certain people of a certain persuasion and hue <laughs> or lack of it, it's just amazing when you when you see Trump has eight crimes that we know of and known of for a couple of years and they were talking about oh once he's out of office we won't let these uh, these lawsuits lapse um, you know, after seven years, you can't go after somebody for a lawsuit, statute of limitations or some shit. And we're not going to let these things lapse. Once he's out of office, we're going to go after him full force. They're not going after him full force. They know about at least eight different instances where he broke the law flagrantly. And he did it ongoing, and he never tried to stop. One of which is the Emoluments Clause, or the Emoluments Act and where you're supposed to divest of any properties or holdings, or at least set up the appearance of divestment by setting up a shell corporation who will take care of your interest in your stead. He just handed it off to his kids, and then he kept profiting from these corporations. He had several hotels and holdings, and he would literally force dignitaries from other countries who were coming to America to stay at his properties and then he would hike up the rates of said properties and he was selling condos to oligarchs in other countries for millions of dollars and profiting wherein he would tell the government his property is only worth a certain amount and then he would jack up the rates and then going to the tax bureau and telling the IRS and telling him you're, you're only worth this and then you pay less in taxes it's a federal crime a couple of crimes he did got Michael Cohen sent to jail and he was he was literally on the docket as unindicted coke conspirator number one now Cohen went to jail got released from jail because of COVID I think Cohen did three and a half months in a federal penitentiary and then he has to just stay at his mansion now. Um, they released him to his mansion. And I think his time's gonna be commuted. I don't think he, I think he can literally travel around the world now uh, as a felon. Still supposed to be serving time. No, I, there's like eight different instances where Trump created or did flagrant crimes. And they're just, they're just dragging their feet because the one thing white power structure does not want to see is other white people suffering consequences for their actions. It's just a fact. Uh, Trump's not going to serve any time. He'll probably be our president again and he'll do away with democracy completely. And that's just a fact. They don't see the laws as something they should follow. They don't see the laws as something that's necessary for them to follow. Laws are just for brown folks. You break the law, you go to jail for the maximum amount of time, and we just add charges on it. And you'll go to jail for something that's a Class C misdemeanor, but you'll end up spending 
three to seven years in jail and real jail not the Martha Stewart jail where there's a garden and you're on TikTok showing off your prison garden and you're growing zucchinis and, and yellow squash and tomatoes and basil and you're literally out and you then you write a book in jail and you give it to your publisher who then turns around and sells that book for you on your behalf and you make tens of millions of dollars while in jail where you get conjugal visits from your significant other every night or like in Epstein's case where you get released on your own recognizant in the morning time and then you have to come back every other weekend or some garbage like that's the jail white people go to you gotta be rich and white you go to that jail but when <laughs> when you're not like real laws apply to real citizens and that's why I don't consider them real citizens they're not Americans as as much as they like to write laws to make it harder to become an American they they're not Americans there's people in Congress right now who helped facilitate January 6th insurrection they're still not even talking about that I've seen the house hearings there's been two of them the last one was in July they're not even talking about the insurrection as far as it pertains to the people in Congress who helped facilitate that. There were there were capital security members who helped open up doors for these insurrectionists and led them through and led them to where members of Congress were locked and barricaded in the House chambers. I haven't seen a single story. I haven't read a single article. There's nothing published. They're not talking about how Capitol Police helped anymore. They did uh, for like a week. They, they talked about it on like MSNBC. Matt, Matt Owl may have done like a two minute story. They're not talking about it anymore because those people were white. It's ironic. There was one like Proud Boy who was black. He's the only one who got a 14 month sentence. Every other white person got like a month to three months. A few of them, the ones who got the tasers and they uh, tasered some cops or they bear maced the cops. Some of those guys, some of them, not all of them, some of those guys, a few of them, like 300 out of the 4,000 to 10,000 people who stormed the Capitol and the 5,000 people, 3,500 3, who were inside the Capitol. 300, that's less than 1%. 300 of them got a six month sentence. No, no, it was a percentage of that 300 got a six month sentence. Some of them got no time served. Some of them got one month sentences. How do you charge people who are engaged in tyranny and insurrection and treason? How do you how do you charge these people with like criminal trespassing? They had zip ties and bulletproof vests and gas masks cuz they brought their own private gas, possibly nerve agents. No one knows if it's agent orange or sarin. No one knows and no one cares. There were pipe bombs constructed, put in backpacks, and brought to the Capitol and placed at the RNC and the DNC right outside with a blast radius big enough that if there was a crowd there, those pipe bombs could have taken out a hundred, hundred fifty people. Easy. They're not talking about the pipe bombs anymore. We're at a real crossroad, and I guess America's never really reconciled with this fact that they're more for racism than they are for equality. When I say they, I'm talking about white folks. They're ten times more for racism than they will ever be for equality or justice or law. I was listening to the same podcast and they were just talking about how uh, in, where was it? Baltimore. There you go. There are uh, 123 officers who uh, are not allowed to be called as witnesses at trials for crimes 
alleged crimes that these officers have written up and arrested folks for. 123 officers are not allowed to testify at the, their own court hearing for the people they've arrested because they're not trustworthy enough to tell the truth under oath. They can't be sworn in and tell the truth. Prosecutors and judges don't trust these cops. How can you still have them walk in the streets and arresting people if you can't trust them to tell the truth? They're still writing police reports and those police reports are being used and admitted into evidence in these trials. They're just not allowed themselves to go. So what would happen is the police chief would have to go and cooperate these fraudulent claims to a judge and to a, a prosecutor on their behalf. Those guys are still collecting checks. Their pension is not gone. And the way they found out that these people are not trustworthy is because they've gone into the records and found a lot of discrepancies. And, and the thing is, when they find discrepancies, they're not going into those cases and overturning them. The people, 123 officers, you got to figure each officer is arresting 20 people a year. 30 people a year oh they're all trying to make detective they're trying to, they're, they're probably arresting a hundred people a year those people are in jail awaiting their court dates based off of bail bonds cash bail bonds which is its own separate video on corruption those people are in jail and their cases aren't being thrown out or overturned but 123 officers aren't allowed to testify anymore because not they think they're corrupt they know they're corrupt they think that because of their corruption they can't be they can't be trusted to tell the truth under oath yet they're out there with the ability to pull the trigger and write up any report and that's it whatever they say goes on the street if you're if you're lucky enough to make it to the court the chief will just vouch for them. But the judges and prosecutors and the, the, the state attorneys won't allow for them to testify. And this is what we're trying to export to other brown countries. America.